JJ Barnes and welcome back to Creative Writing Advice. If you don't know me, I'm JJ, I am the author of How to Write a Story and I'm over here on YouTube bringing you creative writing advice that I'm hoping will help make you a better and more confident writer using the lessons that I have learned over my career and yeah, hopefully we can bring more stories out into the world. So today I'm going to talk to you about how to write mundane to magical. So this is a technique that you can use if you want to take a character into a fantasy world, uh, a realm or a land that is different to ours, usually uh, magic and things like that. But you want to be able to show how that world is different to ours by using a character who's outside of it. And that's like an entry point character. You get to explore that world and explain things to them. It's very, very useful because if you use a character that exists in that land already, explaining to the audience what's going on can be clunky because everybody lives there, they know about it. But if you send an outsider in who wants to know, then the audience learns along with them. So your protagonist knows as much as your audience does they learn at the same rate and then the expo isn't clunky because they're natural questions what's going on what the magic does the history things that that protagonist would want to know anyway there's a, it's an excuse to explain it all to them so your audience then feels connected to the protagonist and learns about that world in a really natural way so your mundane to magical transition is like a door now, I am reading The Magician's Nephew at the minute with my daughter. Well, she is reading it and I am listening it. It's the first book in The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And C.S. Lewis does some great mundane to magical transitions. And the, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the second book, is perfect because it's a literal door. But I'm going to talk about um, The Magician's Nephew today because it's less well known but still familiar enough that you'll understand it. And I think most people are familiar with the wardrobe in Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So you can see that it is a door. On this side of it is our world. Go through the door and on that side of it is Narnia. But The Magician's Nephew is a slightly different example of how to do it. Still brilliant. And I think it's a really good thing to look at multiple examples of doing the same thing in different and interesting and creative ways. Uh, so yeah, it will help you come up with your ideas of how to do that transition from mundane to magical. So the mundane world in The Magician's Nephew is our world. It's the city, they live in London, and it's Polly and Diggory, and they are on the summer holidays from school, and they're playing in the garden, they're exploring. Something that everyone can be familiar with, you understand it, two kids playing, getting to know each other, having fun, fine. They, when they go into Uncle Andrew's attic, it's here that the transition happens. So Uncle Andrew has been sending guinea pigs off into some unknown world using rings. And he wants to send a real human person there to report back. So the ring is the transition method. So when you put the ring onto your finger, pop, you disappear from our world and you transition into the next world. What's really interesting about the magician's nephew is there are multiple mundane to magical transitions within one story. So out of our world into the next magical world is via rings. So Uncle Andrew has the rings where you put the yellow ring on in our world. You disappear and you crawl out of a pond into the magic forest. Now this is a beautiful forest where there's lots of pools and trees and it's all calm and it's very sleepy where they find the guinea pigs. But then what's interesting is the pool itself is another doorway. It is another transition barrier. So then the magical forest where you land from our world is a new mundane. That is a new world that you are familiar with, that you transition out of. So once they're in that forest, then they enter the pools and the pools act as a new doorway. So when these two little kids land in the forest, they've done mundane to magical and landed there. That forest becomes the new mundane and they enter the pools to go into the new magical. So the point is you have a barrier, something that has to be traversed in order to get to that world. And every time Polly and Diggory enter a new world, they are taking the audience with them and learning about it at the same rate. So any questions that they ask, anything they discover, it's worth noticing. 
If you had a person who lived in any of those worlds, they might not stop and observe the trees or the ground because they live there. You, you wouldn't necessarily do that. So it can feel artificial. But if your POV character, your protagonist is new to that world, it gives you an excuse and a way to describe everything around them in beautiful language that's also relevant and interesting and learn. Essentially, it's important that your protagonist then learns what are the rules of that world, what's the history of that world, what are the magical law, what are the people like, what are the dangers, because they would, they would, and that way your protagonist learns it at the same time. So there are so many ways of doing a mundane to magical transition, and it's, as I say, I'm a big fan of it, it works really, really well. In The Magician's Nephew, as I say, you put the ring on, you transition. You jump into the pool, you transition. And every time you do that, you enter the new world and you explore it. So there are ways that you can do it. As I say, in Chronicles of Narnia, he does it a lot. So in Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, it is literally a door that you go through. But whatever it is you choose to do, it is a metaphorical door that your character has to go through to discover the new fantasy realm that you have created. So I would love to hear what uh, what methods you are doing of doing this mundane to magical transition or some of your favourites from fiction. I think the more we see it and the more we learn from it, the more we can understand it and do it ourselves effectively. So drop me a comment below and tell me in movies, books, films, like TV, anything, what transition from mundane to magical inspires you the most, do you like the most, or what have you written to take your characters from our world into the fantasy world that you have created and want to explore and have adventures in? Because I would love to hear all about it and other people will see it and that might inspire them too. And really, that is a brilliant, what, brilliant thing to do. Uh, that's what I'm looking to do and if you can do it too, then I think that's fab. So let me know what you think. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you can subscribe to these videos, I'm bringing out videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9.30 in the morning. Um, I'm having a great time doing this and you know what, I'm getting some fab comments and people following me on Twitter who are brilliant to talk to who've come from these videos. So much creativity is here on YouTube and all over the place and I feel really privileged that I get to explore it with you and I've been, I've had, I've had people talk to me about their opinions on some of these videos and ideas that they've had, which I haven't thought of before. I've challenged me as a writer to think, oh, that is interesting, and I can think about that, and I can use that, and it's fab because that's what we're here for, right? We want to grow and learn as writers, and I've been um, writing for years as my my main job, and still being able to find new things to learn from is just, it it's brilliant, it just shows what a great world this is for writers and how lucky we are to be able to connect with each other like this because we can all inspire each other and I just love that, so thank you very much, keep doing it please, keep talking to me about what you're doing and your thoughts because I, I love it, it it's, it's, it is, it's a real privilege, so thank you. Um, if you go to my website, which is jjbarnes.co.uk, over there you'll find all my work that I have done, uh, links to my books and also my writing advice blog and my art and my social media, um, everything basically, everything that I have going on I've got on my website, links to all my other websites and things that I'm doing. Um, yeah, come find me, I would love to hear from you, talk to me, tell me your ideas, yeah, and I will be back again soon. Thank you very much, bye.